Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. Thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on YouTube. Today we are going to continue with the Newcastle United rebuild. If you caught yesterday's episode, we gave a quick introduction to the club, give a quick outlay of what we are going to try and do. Uh, we are going to have five seasons to go in, take over Newcastle United, spend all the money that the new owners have bought in and see how far we can push them, not only in English football, but European football too. So if you haven't checked out the first episode, go back, have a quick look at that. But if you're all up to date, we're going to jump straight on into this one. As you can see, we have the transfers on the screen. Now, Newcastle were very active in real life in that first window. And there are lots of players that have both come in and left the club already. We had the first window turned off, so we are not going to be really looking at any of these. The first signing that we made is here on the 8th of January, and it was Renan Lodi. But we're going to get to the ins in just a second. Uh, we had quite a few players that left the club. As I said yesterday, we had some squad depth that was just average. Uh, it's okay to have good squad depth, but the quality is not very good. So we we're going to move a few players on to try and justify spending some of that money. I mean, the total there says £228 million. We didn't spend all of it, but we spent a massive chunk of it. So let's go through the players out then. Some names here that probably won't surprise you. Javi Manquillo went to Cruz Azul for £4.4 4 Matt Ritchie ended up going to Celtic for £375,000. Dwight Gale went out on loan to Reading. I think that's got an optional future transfer attached to that. Uh, Jamal Sells left the club, went to Vitesse for £3 million. Kieran Clark to Colne for £625,000. Jacob Murphy went out, out on loan to West Bromwich Albion. Uh, Jay Turner Cook went to Brent for £225,000. Emil Kraft to Fenerbahce for £975,000. And then the last three were loans with uh, Dylan Stevenson, Tom Allen, and Ronnie Edwards. So that means players have gone out. Players are going to come in. As I said, the first one we've given away already is Renan Lodi. He has come from Atletico Madrid, a Brazilian left back who can play all up the left hand side. So pretty sound signing there. Uh, pace is good. Acceleration's good. Tackling's good. Passing's good. 23 years old. I think he's an absolute steal. Valued now at 47 to 53 million pounds. And we paid 24.5 million pounds for him. The next player that came through the door was Martin Neto. You're going to see here that the emphasis is really on youth. He's a 19-year-old Portuguese player who's capped at under-20s level. Uh, not the finished article at the start of the game. Obviously, at 19 years old, you wouldn't expect him to be. But he comes in and he possesses some decent stats from the get-go. He has a good strength, acceleration, balance, natural fitness and pace in the physicals. In terms of his technicals, what he needs, he's got first touch, long shots, passing, technique, and then in the mentors, you can see he has good anticipation, composure, decisions, uh, determination, flair, off the ball, teamwork, vision, and work rate. So an absolute bargain as he's now valued at 27 to 32 million pounds. Just bringing him in for 2.9 million pounds was a bargain. Uh, Federico Bernardeschi was the next player who came in. Versatility here, can play on the left, can play on the right, can also play through the middle and as a makeshift striker if we needed him. Um, he was on the transfer list at Juventus, £1.9 million. This was an absolute no-brainer. Uh, he's on £150,000 a week. And I am weary sometimes of signing these players who pop up on the uh, for sale list from these kinds of clubs. But he's come in and he has done a brilliant job so far. Uh, Quarantine Toliso was the next player through the door. Another one that pops up quite often on the for sale list. It's coming from... Um, Bayern Munich, defensive midfielder in the centre, absolute enforcer. You can see at the age of 27, he has great rounded stats, passing, technique, work rate, off the ball, positioning, teamwork, everything that you need for a central midfielder and a player that I think that Newcastle in real life probably really could do with going out and buying. Uh, the next player was Colin Dagba. He's a £325,000 signing from Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, can play on the left back, can play on the right. He also is 23 years old. Again, not the finished article, and he is a rotation option as a fringe player. But for that kind of price, you cannot complain at all. Uh, Dan Axel Zagadu was the next player to come in. 
So we've Burn and who's the other central defender that we have? It's really bad that it slipped my mind, but Federico Fernandez. Uh, with just those two players really as centre backs after selling a few players, we went out and we started to look at again 22 years old, French under 21 international, was playing for Borussia Dortmund, popped up on a scouting report, six foot five, strength of 18, jump and reach 18, composure 18, pace is good, tackling's good, everything is just to like about Dan Axel Zagadou. The price also at £6 million is an absolute steal. Why Dortmund would have let him go for that price, I'm not sure. We managed to get him and we were happy with the purchase. The next player, Matthias Fasino. He is a midfielder who plays for Inter Milan. Managed to bring him in again. Popped up on a scouting report to say he'd been transfer listed. He's 30 years old, so he's the wise head in the middle of the park amongst the younger players. But again, uh, marking, tackling... Heading, determination, bravery, anticipation, balance, good physicals, mentals, technicals. It's all there for a player who we really needed in the centre of the park. The next one was a bit of a surprise. Didn't really have him on my radar. Again, popped up on a scouting report. So Newcastle scouts obviously are looking for a specific type of player. And we signed Gabby Goal. Gabriel Barbosa, we managed to get him in. I think he's an absolute steal, 25 years old. It's taking his time to adapt to English football, I will have to say. But again, pace, acceleration, finishing is good, dribbling, crossing, can play wide right. Can be a makeshift left winger, but plays up front too. So I think there is goals to come from a Gabby goal. Uh, the next player was Carney Chukrumenka. He is a player who comes from Aston Villa. Another central midfielder, but this one is a one for the future. 18 years old. He has some great starting stats in the game. and One that if you can train him right, I think he will go on to be a bit of a world beater in the future. Uh, £10 million pounds is valued at now. And we paid Aston Villa 6.25. So it's gone up a little bit. And I think once he develops into the player that he is, he will be an absolute steal. Are you going to notice now that we are buying players who are young and who are of British nationalities? Need to fill the squad quota of homegrown players. Plus also for the future, if we can develop these players, they're already going to be in the club and the homegrown state is going to help us when we need to attach the foreign players further on down the line. But Leon King is the next player who comes in. Uh, he is a six foot centre back. Tackling 14, heading of 13, pace of 13. And although he doesn't look special at the start of the game, he actually come quite highly rated by the scouts. So we went in, picked him up, and we thought, we'll just take a chance on Leon King. Helps tick a few boxes along the way too. Ronnie Edwards is the next one. If you watch the England rebuild that I did, we actually put Ronnie Edwards in the England squad. And he held his own. He's 18 at the start of the game. He's at Peterborough United. Uh, we have loaned him back. So they had the benefits of using him to the end of the season. Hopefully developing him a little bit more before he comes in. The only thing with Ronnie Edwards that might be a problem for a lot of people is he's only 5 foot 11. Normally centre-backs are a little bit taller. So hopefully at the age of 18 he might grow a couple of inches and then just go over 6 foot. So we can justify him there. We can also play as a central midfielder as well. So maybe there is a versatility options for the future. The final player that fitted the jigsaw for season one then was Max Wober. He is a defender that needs no introduction. I think most people would go out and have a look at him. Dirt cheap at the start of the game. I think under £10 million maybe. Uh, doesn't want the world in wages. £37,000. Has everything that you need for a Premier League player. Absolutely fantastic signing. And that was the one that really completed the jigsaw in January. So as I said, it's the 1st of February. We have brought the players in. We have let the players go. We have started the season. So obviously now we have just gone through the January transfer window. Let's have a little look at how we are getting on in the competitions then. We're top of the league. Very surprising to me considering we were predicted to finish 7th, I think. Uh, was hoping to just be hovering around those like 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th places. But instead, we are right on up there. We are top of the league. We've played a game more. So once Man City and Liverpool play their games, there's a chance we will be bumped back down to second. But it's a great start to the save. You can also see that Newcastle actually have a decent squad at the start of the game. 
Not too sure why in real life they can't get the best out of the players, but using the rebuild tactic with the original squad has pretty much got us 90% of the way there. I mean, we've had one month with the players that we bought in, but the squad in itself was holding its own to keep us that high in the table. Uh, looking at the stats there, Ryan Fraser, his top assist, he's got 15 assists in the first 24 games. I put him up for sale, so I may have to rethink that, but... um. Yeah, interesting to see those stats from Mr. Fraser. We'll have a little look at the schedule in a minute just so you can see some of the results that we're getting with the tactic and how we have got to be top of the table. In the FA Cup, that they won in quarterfinals. We only got the third round, got knocked out by Blackpool, which was bizarre. And then they won in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup and we got knocked out in the semifinals by Arsenal. So how did we get to be top of the league, you may ask? So we started off the season in a bit of strange fashion. Uh, Norwich was the first game and we had a 1-1 draw there. St. Maximum getting the goal. We then played Leicester and we won 4-2. Uh, two goals from Isaac Hayden, Joe Linton and Callum Wilson getting the goals. We then had a 4-0 victory against Preston before a 0-0 draw against Crystal Palace, which was frustrating. Uh, Brentford, 2-1 victory in the Premier League with goals from Fernandez and Fraser. We then lost to Liverpool, which you would expect 3-1. Didn't really put up a good fight in this game. Callum Wilson getting a goal late on. But that actually was the opening goal of the game. We crumbled after taking the lead. Salah 75 and 82. Oh no, sorry. Sadio Mane 75 and 82. Salah after 84. Wrapping up the points for Liverpool. We then played Derby in the EFL third round. Uh, goals from Trippier and two from Callum Wilson getting us through there. Played Aston Villa in the Premier League. Goals from Willock. Uh, Almiron and an own goal from Tyrone Mings helping us through to three more points in the league. Into October now, uh, play Leeds United, beat them 3-1. Fernandez, Almiron and Callum Wilson getting the goals in that game. Uh, Chelsea, we lost 2-1, put up a good fight in this game. Ryan Fraser getting the goal to open the scoring. Then Fernandez got himself sent off and we collapsed. Give two goals to Lukaku and they won the game 2-1. Uh, moving on from that, though, we beat Everton 4-2 in the Premier League. Kieran Trippier, Dan Byrne, Callum Wilson and St. Maximan getting the goals there. Helped us to another three points. We then beat Watford 3-0 in the EFL Cup fourth round with goals from Dummy, Wood and Joe Willock. You can see we really have kind of divided the team up into two. So we've got the first teamers and the cup players. Some of the cup players there doing themselves proud and starting to show what they can do and it's not going to save them because they will be sold. But we do know that Newcastle's squad at the start of this game actually is a lot better than they were doing in real life anyway. Uh, we move on then. Arsenal were next. We beat them 2-1. Goals from Target and Wood before Smith Rowe getting one back for Arsenal. We then played Burnley. And this is where the, the form is a little bit topsy-turvy. We beat Arsenal and then lose to Burnley. Uh, Shah missed a penalty. Uh, Chris Wood. And St. Maximum scored for us before John Joe Shelby got himself sent off. Veghorst, Barnes and Ben Mee getting the goals for Burnley. Uh, West Ham, 6-0 victory. Alan St. Maximum running them ragged, scoring a hat-trick. Joe Willock, Joe Linton and Chris Wood also getting in on the act. Uh, Man City, this is crazy. We lost to the other teams that we probably should have lost to, Liverpool and Chelsea. But we beat Manchester City in the league. 2-1 It was the score. Uh, Fernandez and Almiron getting the goals there. We then move into December. A 4-3 victory against Tottenham, which was a bit of a thriller. Kieran Trippier getting two goals. Fernandez and Isaac Hayden. 3-0 victory against Brighton. Dan Byrne and John Joe Shelby getting two goals there. Uh, Watford, 4-0 victory. Goals from Byrne, Wilson, St. Maximan and Almiron. Then, like I said, topsy-turvy. You go and beat teams like Tottenham 4-3 and then you go lose to Southampton 5-1. Uh, I'm not too fussed about losing to Southampton, but 5-1 is a little bit ridiculous. 3-0 uh, victory in the FL quarter finals against Everton with goals from Wilson, Godfrey own goal and Almiron. Before we move on to Wolves, where we won 3-0 in that game. Callum Wilson hat-trick just trying to show his worth and why he should be sticking around with the club. We then lost to Manchester United on Boxing Day. A 3-0 defeat was pretty disappointing and Isaac Hayden getting himself off the pitch didn't help. Red card for him. We then, in the reverse fixture of the Chelsea game, won 3-1. Uh, goals from Willock, Joe Linton and Almiron. 
for Golo Kante got a goal for Chelsea. And then we move into the start of the new era. So at this point, we could make some signings. Nobody came in on the first, but we did get three points from Leeds United. A 1-0 victory with a goal from St. Maximan. Arsenal then beat us in the FL Cup semi-final first leg 4-2. Uh, goals from St. Maximan and Joe Willock were not enough there. We then got beat 4-1 by Blackpool in the FA Cup third round. This one was a bit disappointing. Uh, we pretty much put out a first team too, which couldn't understand why it went so wrong, but we got knocked out pretty badly. Uh, we then beat Arsenal in the home leg of the FL Cup semi-final, but it wasn't enough. Uh, Renan Lodi getting himself sent off in this game as well, which always doesn't help, but Tolisso and Neto bagging the goals there. We then moved on to Arsenal in the Premier League. We beat them 2-0 in that game. Kieran Trippier and Dan Axel Zagadou. We then played Everton in the Premier League and we lost that game with Bernadeschi getting himself sent off. So discipline is a little bit of a thing here with the rebuild tactic. And then in the last game before we come back, we beat Manchester United 1-0. Uh, goal there scored by Dan Axel Zagadou. So that is the season so far. That is how we have climbed our way to the top of the Premier League. Uh, interesting to see that City and Liverpool both have a game in hand, so they could go above us. But it's Everton chasing the pack in fourth place with Man United, Chelsea and Arsenal rounding out the top seven. So we are giving it a good, good go. In terms of the finances, I have spent all of the money that they have given me, barring £4 million. We still have £200,000 available as the wage budget. But you can see that the club is healthy. £120 million in the bank. And we are doing well. Club Vision. Sign high reputation players. They are happy with. Uh, working within the wage budget. They are happy with. Top half of the Premier League is going good. We are top. Uh, reached the court final of the FA Cup. They are furious at that. Failed. Uh, reached the court finals of the EFL Cup. We passed that. To qualify for the Europa League. We are currently on course. So hopefully we are a step closer. Job security is saying untouchable and they think we are, or they are delighted with the job we are doing as manager. So last thing to show you before we wrap this one up then is the assistant report. You can see it's changed a little bit now, this 11, as we start to put our stamp on the team. So we've got Dubravka in goal, Target, Woba, Zagadou and Trippier, Guimaraes, Hayden and Vecino in the middle with Fraser, St. Maximan and Gabriel Barbosa up top. So... We are really starting to put our stamp on it. Uh, there are a few positions still, maybe Target and Trippier. Trippier, I think, is safe, but Target is definitely one that we're going to look at replacing. Guimaraes, uh, not too sure. On the fence with him, I know he's a new signing in real life, which means obviously we won't move him on in the first season, but there is a chance if we get the right offer in the window that is in the summer, we could take that. Hayden will be moved on. Fraser, as I said, I have transfer listed, although now I'm seeing his assist, I might have to rethink that. So Maximan is safe and Gabriel Barbo is up top. So it's all going well. In tomorrow's episode, we are going to push to the end of the first season. Can we keep it up? Can we stay top of the table? If you want to find out, you're going to have to come back and watch tomorrow. But if you're still listening to me at this point of the episode, firstly, a big thank you for sticking around. Secondly, you haven't hit that like and subscribe button what are you waiting for please go do that leave me a comment down in the box below to let me know what you think of the series so far uh, but for this one i'm going to wrap it there come back tomorrow and check out the next episode or go and look at another video on the channel and i'll see you soon